The best performing battery and mineral technology companies on the ASX are up between 30% and 64% over the last month. This is Final Market Points where we connect the leading market themes and the top performing companies for better trading. You can like the video to support the channel, click subscribe for updates and comment below to let us know which lithium miners you're trading. Here we see on the chart is Oracle Brain, which is a company that many lithium traders on the ASX know as being one of the largest and subject to recent mergers acquisition activity that has made them even larger. You can see that from June they've come from lows of 550 to touching, getting up to that $10, $9.97 mark in the recent days. This is one of the best performers, but not the best for the month. And what we want to do is understand whether it's the small caps, which we're going to surface in a minute, or whether it's the commodity itself. Here we see the, the movement of the commodity and tracking mostly sideways has risen a little bit in August, but nothing in comparison to that dramatic rise of December 2020 through to hitting April highs only a few months later. And we'll see on these charts that that coincides with a lot of these strong performances. We also have a look at the other battery technologies, all condensed into the ETF on the ASX called ACDC run by ETFS. We can see that that's mostly tracked sideways, so we're taking into account here the other minerals that are used in the battery technology process, whether it's nickel, cobalt and the like. But what we want to see now is these top performers on the ASX. Anton Resources comes in at number 6, 31% gain over the month. This company, along with all the other ones that we're surfacing this time, are companies that we've seen many times before and the chart speaks to why we've looked at them. Anton Resources had a huge movement in January, and as you can see in August, it's shot out of the gates once again. Whether that's a VCP is yet to be debated, but one can really look at this real big contraction from the highs, one bounce, second bounce coming down to the 200 day moving average, the red line, and then a third and a fourth, third sitting on the 50 day, coming down under it, and then the fourth one sitting above it and sitting above congestion levels and around recent resistance. Now, if you want to know more about trading volatility contraction patterns, you can click on the link in the description below to download and one, watch a video how it works and also see, get the steps to work through in your own time. But whether it becomes a high and tight flag is another one and that's another question to look at. But Anson Resources has really shot up and getting back to that 10 cent level is number six. Number five is Lith Energy. We have looked at this in the last couple of weeks and that to see that chart really understand, we can understand why, because it is a recent listing and they have shot up from under that 40 cent level, which was a bit of a resistance to shooting up over 80 cents in a short amount of time. This high and tight flag potential, it seems to be losing its grip on the high and tight flag as it is coming back below 50% of that rally. So that does, what we like to see with a high and tight flag is to maintain a fast and rapid movement, which we have but then of that movement break out of say 40 cents to 80 cents, that's 100% rise in a short amount of time. We want to see that flag sit above and maintain the congestion above halfway, which is really slipping at the moment for Lyft Energy on that 33.48% gain over the month. Then we come up at number four, which is LPD. Another company we have seen many times before, 33% gain, lower liquidity, lower trading, share trading price. You can see on the right hand side of the chart that these are low fraction prices. So we're looking at 2.1 cents, 1.6 cents. These are the ranges that we're working with, but Lapidico has been a good performer at 33% for the month. FFX is the next one that we're looking at. Fire Finch putting on 33.8%. You can see the breakout of 40 cents coming up to 60. This is not 100% gain, but it is maintaining a tighter congestion at the top end of the range and sitting around this high, which is very positive and constructive for that movement. They can maintain that and break out to the next lev level, very constructive. So we've seen they have been, been able to do it before, sitting out, breaking out here, sitting on congestion levels and then moving to the next step, next, lay next level, next breakout, and then congesting once again before moving on. So this has been positive for Firefinch. Now we're going up to a favorite for many traders, which is Lake Resources, 36% gain over the month. You can see for the week, they are actually down, but we will see that Lake Resources has been a strong performer coming from this 30 cents, sitting around 40 cents of resistance, and then coming back for a minor pullback, not getting back into the breakout range, sitting above the 50 day moving average, somewhat consolidation, coming up and retesting that. So if that's a VCP or a cup and handle, interesting to look at that there but it does finally break out with some volume down here, decent volume you can see on the chart, pulling back into that range and only just doing it 
just holding closes above the 10-day moving average, so maintaining that. If you're looking at it from pocket pivot perspective, this Gil Morales and Chris Karcher, that is maintained it after the pocket pivot breakout. The so pocket pivot breakout actually occurring before what a can slim would say trading above 40 cents, and then running into this movement here, which is a nice consolidation. Is maintaining some sort of conform conforming, and as you can see here, the volume's been dropping off as that selling's been coming in, and then the buying. We can't see the volume is being a huge movement on this day here where it did drop down under 55 cents and close there, but has recovered a little bit to finally trade above that range. It hasn't taken, it hasn't gotten there as fast as it came down one day and took three days to get back. That is alarming and concerning. So to see how it trades in this congestion period will be critical for Lake Resources. SYA, another favorite. Sanea Mining, SYA's put on 64% over the last month. And this is a similar movement here. Massive breakout, 8 cents, 16 cents, 100% gain in the matter of just over a week. Touching, swimming up 17.75 cents, and then doing that on large volume, but pulling back and closing in the lows, which was dramatic. And from a Wyckoff theory perspective, that is a negative. Coming down with more down days, reasonable volume on these days, but then finding some sort of support around this 12 cent range above this recent high. That is constructive, while volatile, still constructive, and then as of the last two days show, it has put on and gained somewhat. So they've put on 10% for the week. On the month, we're looking at 64% gains. Bring this out to have a look at how these companies have performed over the quarter. We can see, if we'll sort these to see that say no mine is 154%. Doesn't change too much because a lot of these gains have been done in the, put on in the last month. So Lake Resources and Ensign, we do see that these orders don't change too much. Or a core is put on 42%, which is great for one of the largest international leader in the lithium space. And then we have a look at the yearly movements to see how that's really tracked and getting an idea of, we've got the recent listing of Lith Energy, so they're not coming up here on the rankings, but say an uh, say an A, 296, 292 for Lake, Five Finch 152, and then Anson Resources 151. These are the leading lithium miners on the ASX, and we're looking at battery technology as a whole, but clearly this month we've got lithium as leading the charge. Comment below to let us know which lithium, lithium ion, battery mineral technology companies that you're focusing on, and which commodities you're focusing on as well.